You might make me look a little better, but you can't fix ugly. Welcome to Ms. Mojo Glow, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Queer Eye moments that made us ugly cry. Number 10. You Can't Fix Ugly The very first hero in the revival was Tom, who was nominated by his daughter because of his love of jorts and what he called redneck margaritas. Upon meeting the Fab Five, he famously told them that they, quote, can't fix ugly. That's what made the moment at the end of the episode where Tom finally starts to feel comfortable in his own skin so emotional. It was a sign of what was to come later in the show, as the Fab Five meet people they never would have otherwise and change their lives for the better. Number 9. Kathy Goes to Broadway for this extremely emotional episode, JVN returns to his hometown in Illinois to make over Kathy the music teacher. Kathy is so dedicated to the kids that she hasn't taken time for herself in decades. Hearing Jonathan talk about how difficult their time in high school was, but also about how meaningful Kathy's unconditional support for all her students is, is sure to open the tear ducts. You have changed so many lives. But then, right at the end, Kathy and her husband are presented with tickets to see Waitress on Broadway, which one of her former students actually worked on. Number 8. Group Therapy This was a frat house like no other, with a group of teenage and 20-something boys holding huge charity events, but they weren't looking after the house or themselves, and it was on the Fab Five to help the boys grow up. Karamo takes them to a campfire and they take turns to start talking, confessing what they've been struggling with, and discussing how they can start to ask for help. He comes around and brightens up the room, and I, I, I love it, I, lo I love you. It's heart-wrenching to see these young men talk to one another so candidly, and really exemplify that this fraternity was all about friendship, support, and putting good out into the world. Number seven, Skylar's suit fitting. Queer Eye has always pushed the boundaries of diversity and representation on television, and in series two, we met Skylar, the first trans hero the show had visited. The episode opened with clips from Skylar's top surgery, showing how vital these procedures really are for trans people. Tan then brought someone in to give him a custom suit fitting, after he previously had a bad experience with them, changing the cut of the suit to fit the different proportions of a trans man. Sometimes, things that seem small can mean the whole world. Number 6. Miles Sings Mama Tammy's episode in Series 2 really wanted to explore that there are often divides between LGBTQIA people and religious communities. I'm so blessed to have a mother like I have. Tammy was a hardworking community leader, but her son Miles was openly gay and had been struggling since returning to his small hometown. Though he can now rely on his mother, he opens up to Karamo about how he'd love to reconnect with the church and the choir. Bobby and Karamo then take Miles to the Atlanta Gay and Lesbian Chorus, where he's able to sing again in a safe, supportive environment. Number 5. Remembering Allison This episode was absolutely devastating all the way through, so it's hard to pick just one moment. Rob had recently lost his wife to breast cancer, becoming a single father to two young boys. The Fab Five arrived in the week when Rob and his boys were set to leave the house they'd shared with Allison and move somewhere else, an extremely difficult thing to do. But Bobby was on hand to ensure that her presence was still felt in the new home, including engraving a handwritten message from Allison onto a wooden chest. The chest was where Rob's memories of Allison were kept, including a book she recorded for their sons before her death. Number 4. ALS Jennifer was the primary carer for her husband John, who was diagnosed with ALS a few years before they appeared on the show. She would do anything for her family, and it was them who took the time to nominate her. Karamo gets Jennifer to open up during a relaxing walk, and she explains that she stays so busy all the time partly so that she never has the chance to dwell on how difficult things have gotten. Karamo convinces her that she needs to take the time to work through her emotions and look after herself so that she can continue to be a loving wife and mother. To me, it's like the longest drawn out break. Number 3. Dr. Yi's Big News Lily Yi worked for years to complete her medical degree and residency and had just become a pediatrician when the Fab Five arrived. Throughout the week, they taught her how to readjust to family life after spending so much time studying and working as she prepares to spend more time with her daughter. But then, at the end of the episode, Lily drops a bombshell. She's expecting again, and there's going to be a fourth member of the family. Because we're actually having another baby. Yeah! Number 2. William Proposes 
Shannon was the one who nominated her boyfriend, William, as he wasn't seeing himself as the kind, wonderful person she did. After being together for a long time, though, something needed to change, and William took the opportunity the Fab Five gave him to plan the perfect proposal. He and Shannon visited an outdoor movie theater with a homemade meal Antony taught him to make, and the proposal film he'd put together started to play. We were crying almost as much as Shannon herself was when he asked her to marry him. Shannon Ann Heller. <laughs> Will you marry me? Number 1. AJ Comes Out When we met AJ, he was out to his friends and considering marrying his boyfriend, but with his family and at work, he was hiding his sexuality. Sadly, he was never able to come out to his father before his death, and now wants to come out to his stepmother. He has an extremely personal letter he's written and takes his stepmom aside so that he can read it to her. These three words have been an enormous wall between us. The fear of coming out is something LGBTQIA fans around the world will understand. But AJ's fears, thankfully, don't come to pass.